Welcome to another patho video. Today's topic is infectious mononucleosis. In nearly all cases, the cause of mono is the Epstein-Barr virus, also known as herpes simplex 4. EBV has a double-stranded DNA genome. Much less commonly, a few other viruses may be the cause, like cytomegalovirus, which is herpes simplex 5. Transmission of the EBV occurs through physical contact of body secretions, including blood and other body fluids, but especially saliva. Because kissing is a common mode of transmission, mono is known as the kissing disease. EBV can also be spread through saliva by sharing drinks and utensils. For children, daycare centers are prime locations for spread. Once in the oropharynx, the virus primarily infects epithelial cells and then the deeper B cells in lymphoid tissue. The glycoproteins BMRF2 and GHGL on the virus will bind to integrin receptors on epithelial cells. GP350 on the virus binds to CD21 on B cells and GP42 on the virus will bind to MHC class 2 molecules on the B cells. These interactions allow the virus to infect the epithelial cells and B cells. As mentioned, EBV will first encounter the epithelial cells of the oropharynx. Using the glycoproteins BMRF2 and GHGL to bind to integrin receptors on an epithelial cell, it gains entry into the cell where it replicates and causes the epithelial cell to lyse. EBV then targets B cells of the surrounding lymphoid tissue, specifically the tonsils and adenoids, where it uses its GP350 molecule binding to the CD21 receptor on B cells to gain entry into them. EBV can cause lysis of the B cells, but it more commonly establishes itself as an extrachromosomal episome. When this happens, EBV will replicate its double-stranded DNA genome using cellular DNA polymerases and the expression of the EBV genes, Epstein-Barr nuclear antigen 2 and latent membrane protein 1 to activate the B cell to grow and proliferate. This ensures that there is a large number of B cells that contain the viral genome. Infected B cells prime naive T cells and note that dendritic cells can prime naive T cells as well. When this occurs, with B cells, they become latent and the activated T cells proliferate. Viral shedding in the saliva will begin after infection and its highest concentration in the saliva for the following 10 to 14 days in children and 30 to 50 days in adults. And this will persist in smaller amounts throughout life. Even after establishing latency, the virus may be reactivated with changes in the host and undergo lytic phases again. In the paracortical T zones of the lymph nodes, T cells and NK cells proliferate. Due to the rapid proliferation of T cells being mounted against the infected B cells, some CD8 positive T cells can form atypically and become very large. These atypical CD8 positive T cells are known as downy cells and can be observed on a peripheral blood smear. T cell proliferation is the main cause for lymph adenopathy or enlargement of lymph nodes, as well as splenomegaly. The spleen can become quite large and be in danger of rupture. Infectious mononucleosis has an insidious onset, meaning symptoms come on gradually. The incubation period or time that passes from initial exposure to the onset of symptoms can be anywhere from four to eight weeks. A prodromal period of about three days consisting of malaise, anorexia, and chills, occurs before the onset of the classic triad of symptoms, which includes pharyngitis, fever, and lymph adenopathy. Pharyngitis occurs due to lysis of virus-infected epithelial cells and B cells in the oropharynx, and is usually most severe on days five through seven of symptoms, and persists for one to two weeks. Lymph adenopathy is caused by rapid proliferation of T cells mounting an immune response against the virus. The cervical nodes are the most involved. 
because they drain the pharynx and tonsils, but axillary and inguinal nodes may also be involved. Splenomegaly is often palpable, but is sometimes only detected by ultrasound. Some patients develop hepatitis, which is characterized by nausea, anorexia, hepatomegaly, and jaundice. Liver issues typically resolved without causing permanent damage. Some of the polyclonal antibodies released from B cells attack blood cells. 25 to 50% of patients demonstrate hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and aplastic anemia, but all of these tend to be mild. Acute symptoms generally resolve in three to four weeks, but cervical adenopathy and lethargy may persist for two to three months or longer. Neurological complications occur in one to five percent of patients and include cranial nerve palsies, meningoencephalitis, transverse myelitis, optic neuritis, peripheral neuritis, cerebellitis, and Guillain-Barre syndrome. Upper airway obstruction due to enlarged tonsils and edema of mucous membranes occurs in 1% of cases, as does splenic rupture. In individuals with impaired T-cell immunity, such as those with HIV, an EBV infection may lead to lymphoproliferative disorder, such as non-Hodgkin lymphoma, like Burkitt's lymphoma, or EBV-positive Hodgkin's lymphoma. In such cases, B-cell division is unimpeded due to lack of T-cells, increasing the risk of cancer. There is also an increased risk for nasopharyngeal carcinoma due to the epithelial cell involvement. Symptomatic mono also doubles the risk for later development of multiple sclerosis. Peripheral blood shows an increase in the number of leukocytes. White blood cell count being between 12,000 and 18,000 cells per microliter, more than 60% of which are lymphocytes and downy cells. Definitive diagnosis involves testing IgM and IgG antibodies against viral capsid antigens and EBV nuclear antigens. IgM against capsid antigen are diagnostic of a primary infection, and IgG against capsid antigens persists throughout life. A monospot test is an inexpensive test that is sometimes used to detect heterophile antibodies. Heterophile antibodies target non-human, usually sheep or horse, red blood cells added to human serum. Clumping of the red blood cells indicates presence of the heterophile antibodies. Because heterophile antibodies can appear with other types of infections, the monospot test is not completely reliable. It can also yield false positive results. Group A strep can be ruled out with the throat swab or culture for strep. Treatment targets symptoms, plenty of fluids, good nutrition, as well as getting an adequate rest are important for managing symptoms. Avoidance of contact sports for at least three weeks is advised to decrease the risk of splenic rupture. NSAIDs can be taken for pharyngitis, fever, and headache. For most cases, antivirals are not recommended and corticosteroids are only recommended in cases with certain complications, such as upper airway obstruction, hemolytic anemia, and thrombocytopenia. In summary, mono is primarily caused by Epstein, Epstein-Barr virus. Transmission is mainly through saliva. EBV mainly infects epithelial cells of the oropharynx and B cells. T-cell proliferation causes the lymph adenopathy, splenomegaly, and hepatomegaly. Main symptoms include the classic triad of pharyngitis, fever, and lymph adenopathy. Splenomegaly, CNS complications, and hepatitis may also occur. Peripheral blood shows increased levels of white blood cells and antibodies against viral components may be measured in the blood. The monospot test tests for heterophile antibodies. Treatment targets symptoms. Now for questions. Pause the video and consider your answers. If you chose the following, you are correct.
Thanks for watching.